The transfer portal continues to rock and roll. I'm telling you, it, it deserves its own Netflix series. It really does. Like Netflix, the ball is in your court to make that happen. A lot of names that we got to track. One guy we talked about previously on the live show on Tuesday, Bear Alexander, unexpectedly jumped in the portal on the day of Georgia's spring football game. Sounds like he's going to make a visit to USC this coming weekend. Now, we talked about it on Tuesday's show. That's the school to watch. That's the school that has been mentioned whenever you hear about Barry Alexander and his recruitment and where he might go. Listen, the value of Barry Alexander to USC cannot be overstated. Big body, over 300 pounds, played well for Georgia down the stretch. If you could add him to the middle of that defense, that would make USC substantially more What's the right word? It would make them better in the trenches, right? Like, let's not overthink how to say this. They'd be better in the trenches, and they'd be more of a problem for everybody else in the Pac-12. Because Barry Alexander, I'll just say this, there's not a lot of guys like him just running around in the Pac-12. I talked to somebody close to Georgia the other day, and they said if he does go to USC, he's going to just wreck shop in that conference. That's not to dunk on the Pac-12. I think it's more of a testament to Barry Alexander and Georgia. Now, let's revisit the reasoning as to why he left Georgia. Because last time we talked about this, I told you what I had heard was there was something to do with, you know, wanting to, to see more snaps. And that may still be true. Dig, did a little bit more digging. And it sounds like the culture at Georgia as a whole wasn't necessarily meshing well with Bear Alexander. I'm not going to extrapolate too much more on that. But if you're a USC fan, you're hearing that you're saying, wait a second, we, we don't want someone who doesn't fit with a winning culture on our team, I would just say this. Lincoln Riley and USC have made a living off of landing top transfers and making them work in Los Angeles. So whatever Lincoln Riley is doing with the transfer portal, one, trust his evaluation. Two, trust his evaluation from a culture standpoint in bringing guys in. And then also believe in the fact that he's making these transfer portal guys work within his system. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Got a lot of y'all tuned in. Make sure you subscribe. Got a lot to talk about throughout the rest of the show, throughout the rest of our time as we lead into fall camp. Don't want you to miss any of it. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram at JD Pakel. Now, another high profile name was Savell Smalls, an edge from Washington. Now, listen to this. In the 2020 class, he was the number two ranked edge in the country coming out of high school. Like you turn on his huddle tape when he was playing football in Washington at the high school level, and the first few plays are him playing receiver. Translation, the dude's an athlete. The dude's got some physical abilities that are just, quite frankly, you can't teach. Now, the frustration is, was a five-star out of high school, like I said, was ranked very, very highly, but just really hasn't produced to what you would expect a five-star player to do through three years at Washington. My, my feel is he's got two years left, and sometimes all it takes for a guy with so much ability is just a change of scenery, right? Like, like football, so much with success can be correlated to the scheme that you're in. How many times have we seen a guy not really work out at one school, transfer somewhere else, and just blow up? It's probably the most hyperbolic example, but I mean, Joe Burrow, he wasn't going to see the field at Ohio State. He couldn't see the field at Ohio State goes to LSU and has arguably one of the best seasons in college football history. So I'm not saying Savelle Smalls is Joe Burrow or the equivalent of at the edge position. I'm just saying keep an eye on where he ends up landing. I don't know if it'll be on the West Coast. I mean, he had his pick of the litter coming out of high school. He's from the state of Washington, so maybe a school on the West Coast is in the mix. We're purely guessing there. But bottom line, tons of ability, multiple years left. If you hit with Savelle Smalls, like if, if you – get all that he is or was cracked up to be at the high school level, you hit in a very big way and get someone who could be a game changer for your football team. Just because it wasn't the fit for Washington doesn't mean Savelle Smalls doesn't still have the juice. Make that very, very clear. Now, another five-star guy that jumped into the portal. This was a surprise to a lot of people. Jordan Hudson, wide receiver at TCU, six foot one, 190 pounds. The comp for him According to Charles Power, director of scouting and rankings at On3, y'all know whenever you tune into this show, I got some good things to say about Charles Power because my dude just straight up doesn't miss. The comp for him is Jackson Smith and Jigba. That is very high praise. There is a lot that he has to say about Jordan Hudson that would probably take up a lot longer of our show that we don't really have time for. Bottom line, dude's a player. Like I said, was a five-star out of high school. He's going to help somebody this coming season. And he was productive at TCU. 
Like, do not get it twisted. TCU is losing a very good player who contributed for them last year. I mean, 14 catches, 174 yards, three touchdowns as a freshman. The expectation was he would start again for TCU, or excuse me, would be the starter for TCU on the outside this coming season. So it's a loss for TCU, but somebody's going to get a baller. Now, he's from the state of Texas. I believe it's Garland. Uh, I was told SMU is a school to watch for him. I think he was committed to SMU at one point in time when Sonny Dykes was there before eventually following him to TCU. Keep an eye on him. Five-star talent. Somebody is going to, to get a stud. It's, it's a different situation than Savelle Smalls where he was a five-star out of high school, hadn't really produced yet. Like Jordan Hudson showed up at TCU, did his thing. Now going to go somewhere else and do his thing somewhere else. He's a proven commodity to a degree. Now, one more guy I want to talk about, this is a curious case, is an offensive guard at Florida, Ethan White. And for those of you that maybe tuned out a couple of weeks ago, you say, Ethan White, yeah, yeah, that's the guy who's transferring to USC, right? Good for Lincoln Riley. Getting better in the trenches there on the offensive side of the ball, that's good. I mean, the second team, all SEC selection, good for Lincoln Riley. He's going to join after spring practice, correct? Well, that would have been correct about 24, 25 hours ago. Now... It's being reported by our own Matt Zenitz, who follow Matt Zenitz on Twitter if you haven't already. It's being reported that he is, in fact, not going to USC, will not be there after spring practice. Instead, he's coming back to Florida. Now, I don't want to speculate too much, but if Ethan White is to come back to Florida and is to play, there's two thoughts I have. One, okay, how is he received in the locker room? Because there's a feeling, I mean, there's just a perception around USC. Let's be real. They do really well in the portal, and there's a lot of people that believe that USC is, is, you know, just picking and choosing whoever they want out of the transfer portal. And they're like, oh, great, you just wanted to go to USC, be, be with Lincoln Riley, be with the Palm Trees and, and the LA NIL money. Like, that's the perception. Is that reality? You know, I don't know. But for Ethan White to go back to that locker room, I'm just curious to see how that would mesh with his teammates. Because on one hand, you're like, hey, man, you know, you made a decision to leave. You made a decision to leave this entire locker room. I don't know how we feel about welcoming you back. That's just human nature. That's, that's fair if that's how the locker room at Florida would feel. Now, the other side of this, though, is that Florida needs help on the offensive line. Like, a guy can play now. He wasn't just someone who showed up and, and you know, was able to be serviceable. He was a second-team all-conference kind of player. If he plays for Florida this coming season, you are better on the offensive line. So it's kind of this interesting dance of, we don't know how we feel about you leaving, Really good football player. You make our team better at a position that we desperately need help at. Because whoever's playing quarterback is going to need some protection as they're trying to replace a lot of pieces on that offensive line. They got the running backs to run the ball. Do they have the offensive line to block for those running backs? If Ethan White's able to be a guy for them this year at Florida, like that would be a, a very big addition to the offensive line. So again, not going to USC, headed back to Florida is the report. We'll keep an eye on that one. But I promise you, by the next time we're on air on Tuesday, there'll be more portal buzz. There'll be more names we've got to talk about. Keep an eye on Bear Alexander over the weekend. A lot of people feel like USC is essentially, you know, very, very, very close to, like, like it's USC and then the rest of the pack behind them. So keep an eye on how that visit goes. And we'll discuss that as we go further along. But Jordan Hudson in the portal, Savelle Smalls in the portal, guys with a lot of ability. It's going to help somebody's roster looking for a new home.